Hey y'all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler and you've arrived at lesson four in our Tangled Ribbon Flower series. Thank you for being with me today. It is uh, a pleasure to be with you again. Um, today we're going to change things up just a little bit. I'm going to teach you a new ribbon, um, a new ribbon technique. And I'm also going to use this uh, Zentangle Apprentice tile, which is sized at four and a half inches by four and a half inches. And so it's larger than a regular standard Zentangle tile, which is three and a half by three and a half. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate for you how we're going to set up this flower um, in its entirety so that you can then be practicing in your sketch pads for when we get our um, larger um, paper out and do our finished product, okay? So what I'm basically going to do today is show you how I'm going to set up our larger tile. And I've uh, decided that I'm going to use an Opus tile for mine, which is 10 and a half inches by 10 and a half inches. So it's a square, just a larger square. And so you guys can be sourcing either hot press watercolor paper or an Opus tile or whatever you would like to use. Uh, you could use cold press watercolor paper. However, uh, you'll need a larger nib pen and you'll need to take in the surface into consideration. So if that is what you're considering, then I would practice drawing my patterns on cold press watercolor paper as well so that you uh, are able to execute those the way that you want to when it comes to the final, final project, okay? So here we go. First today, I'm going to show you our newest uh, technique uh, for ribboning. And that is going to be to show you, I mentioned last time, how to use a spiral to form the ribbon, okay? Now, after you do this spiral, and you sort of want it to be an ovally type of a thing, um, you want it to be elongated, then come over here from the top, like we do on all of our ribbons, sort of make a straightish line, come down, okay? Now on the inside, what you have to do is the, the direction in which you draw your upper angle, this one on top, this angle is what you're going to replicate here. Okay, and so that's the top curve. You're going to do that again here where you end it off. And uh, you can do this straight across. You can round it the way that we are, are doing for our flower petals. But when you practice this, you can do however you like. Okay, so, well, mostly each of these lines, what your goal is, is to have them parallel with this, okay? You want all these lines, and I didn't exactly uh, execute that correctly here, but all of these lines, our goal is to make them parallel to the top one, okay? So let's try this again and put it into practice. Now, uh, one other thing, if you are going to have this be a um, smaller size ribbon. So for example, this is this far apart. And if we put this here, you know, approximately there. So if we wanted to do that and make this a little bit shorter, we'll draw this inner line here. Uh, how would that work? There we go. So you would sort of do a, I don't know, <laughs> but you get the you get the idea, right? But you don't have to do it this way. If you make this other ribbon part a little bit thicker, then uh, obviously that would that would disappear. So let's back up. Let's start with the start. Okay, let's try this again. Start the same way we do our other ones, and you've got your J shape here, okay? So now with your J, bring it 
let's do this much today and stop. But just know that you can continue this as much as possible if you want. So bring your J right on around, sort of make another one. Right? And you're going to switch over. Draw your top and then curve down the side. And now parallel. Right. It's sort of parallel. And there you've got it. Now I think this is close in enough to where we don't really need uh, to divide this any further but we could if we wanted to and that would probably be fairly realistic okay so this is the next ribboning technique let's draw a couple of more of these and see how we do J and then bring it up around Draw your top part. Pay attention to the width here. All right, parallel lines. And there you have it. Yeah, one more. And these can be as close in or as far apart as you want. Just keep in mind that that will make a difference in how the whole thing turns out, okay? Just like that. All right, so <clears throat> what we're gonna do today I have decided to um, to uh, set our my opus tile up, and so my finished product. I've decided to use an ink tense background on it. Um, when I did my um, my example art, I used a colored pencil around that, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. And then I kept my petals um, a different color. But I think on this project, what I'm going to do is make an ink tense background and then draw over it. And we'll see. I may change my mind after today's experiment, but that's why we're experimenting, okay? Now, if you're using hot press watercolor paper for today's project, what I want you to do is cut a piece for yourself that's about four, between four and six inches large, okay? These can be done smaller, but sometimes it helps me to work a bit bigger. And since our final project is going to be bigger, it doesn't hurt to be practicing this. All right. So, ink tints. Let's get started. So, I'm trying out uh, three colors for this um, sample. And uh, this is my fuchsia in ink tints. And you'll notice that this is a much different process on this smooth apprentice tile than it is on my standard Zentangle tiles. This is mauve, and I find that these two colors, the fuchsia and the mauve, work very well together. They're both a red base purple. Not that all purple isn't red base, but it's also depends on how much blue. This is a deep rose color that I frequently use with these on gems but I'm not sure how that's going to play with these, and I'm not just really excited about my color lay down here. So what I'm not going to do, I think, on the other side is I'm not going to use these directly on the surface. I think I'm gonna drop them in from the paintbrush because if you'll notice, these don't disappear in the same way that they do on the Zentangle paper because you can't, uh, this cardstock is not as porous as the Zentangle paper, so you do not get the same, um, the same nice lay down. Okay, so for this, I'm going to coat my tile 
and of course for the opus tile I won't I will do this also um, and I will probably drop my color in in this way as well since uh, this is what I like to do when I when I get the random placement sort of blotchy stuff and that's what I like I really like that with the ink tints and with watercolor really all right so now I'm going to start with my um, fuchsia I think this is the fuchsia and I'm just gonna dab it here and there using plenty of water on these apprentice tiles it's going to be a much lighter color and I'm just going to go crazy with it a little bit since this is my lightest uh, shade or at least it's uh, the one I like to use for my lighter shades any of these colors by the way if you wonder like I did when I first got them when I didn't really understand how you get the really light shades because I couldn't find any colors that were really light uh, it's because you just add water to get uh, lighter shades so yeah I'm a little slow sometimes with the epic but I was learning everybody learns everybody has questions no questions are stupid unless it's the 14th time you've asked Okay, so I'm intentionally keeping this fairly damp, wet, and I've got some uh, lint that has crept in here and there, but uh, I'm not going to sweat anything like that. I will be able to pick it up either with my brush. If it doesn't come up, uh, then I can come back after it's dry and wipe it right off. So I am not too uh, upset or concerned about that. Now I'm intentionally letting this um, color do its thing, be interesting. I'm shifting it because I'm uh, using this at a, at a slight angle. And uh, so I like for it to be able to drip down and sort of mix and, and do its little watercolor thing. I love that effect. You do not have to do yours like this at all. And I do want to leave some areas of interest uh, that are dark like this one where I'll have sharper edges once it's dried I think those will be interesting I don't enjoy this process nearly as much on these apprentice tiles although they they do take a decent amount of water and you can use water base um, stuff on them and I did these for years before I had ever tried an original tile so nothing wrong with that it's just a different experience all right and you may have a lot easier time with hot press watercolor paper I think that's going to depend on uh, what you use um, for the person I don't know if that was Nancy Pearson it might have been Nancy Pearson that asked me about um, a notebook notebook or journal um, to use for this project um, I will have to still source that um, and see what's out there um, I if I if I were really wanting spiral bound and using wet media on it then uh, and I wanted a low-cost alternative I would use the Canson mixed media um, sketch pad which is what I normally use so um, but I, I have not yet looked at like uh, cold press watercolor paper pads or anything like that. So I'll have to take a look. All right. Okay. And now that I've sort of got some color in here, I'm going to take a tissue. And you can tell I've got a lot of water on here still. And take a tissue and dab some more uh, spots of interest in. I'll lighten some spots and put some interesting, a uh, bit of interesting pattern in there, hopefully. Now I'm going to grab my hair dryer, dry this off, and we'll see where we're at.
Now you can see this has got quite a buckle in it, right? So then I usually just carefully bend it out. And again, I don't get this problem with, with original Zentangle tiles because they are built for water. So something to think about. And again, the hot pressed watercolor paper might do much better than this. Uh, when I do my next mock-up, I'll have to see about that. All right. So we're going to work with this bendy thing. All right. So uh, in when it comes and see the lint pieces that were stuck to that, just wipe right off. So I don't sweat those very much. All right. So now, keeping in mind that we don't want to erase uh, a whole lot, but understanding that we will be erasing necessarily in some areas. Um, the way that this is constructed, this uh, tangled flower, is I start with, um, and you can, just like all of the radial tangles that we did in the 100 Days Project, if you guys watch that, if you didn't, um, right here, is a uh, link to the playlist. All right, um, as in all of those, you could start these from the corner, which would be an extremely dynamic, cool, fun look on a tile. Uh, you can start in the center, which I did on our example. And you want to give that middle orb a decent amount of uh, size because uh, the size of this is gonna depend on how many petals you can fit in, right? Okay, once you have drawn in your center, your center um, orb, and you can make this bigger too, if that's what you want. I normally start by making one petal straight and um, and, um, well, not straight. Uh, what I usually, okay, let me hush and, and just sort of show you. I normally start with a normal one where I start narrow in at the base and get larger out in sort of a little bit of a balloon look. This is a little bit larger than I normally make them, but it's fun looking and there's nothing wrong with it. Okay, although I probably will change my mind later because, and here's why. Um, in fact, I'm changing my mind right now, and here's why. <laughs> As I think about this, I have not drawn these into uh, a flower shape in a couple of years now, and so um, I'm wondering how much of my ink tints this eraser is going to pick up. It may, be, it may be permanent, however, when you lift the tooth of the paper in this fashion, um, the color is gonna come off with that. So that's my, my cautionary note for uh, the pencil and erasing portion of this, is you may lift some of your color up, but that doesn't look too bad, okay? All right, so um, what I found was you wanna keep these fairly narrow simply because when you want to have room for your, for your ribboning stuff, then uh, you, you need room to the side. So let's start with one of our standard ones that we've done. Let's do the one we did last time. That's too far. And make our J and I'm gonna curl that back around in, okay? And again, be prepared to erase on this, all right? Even though I'm not a big uh, proponent of erasing when you're doing stuff like this, um, also with Celtic knots, you have to be willing to sort of sculpt your lines. Okay, now, see how this turned out. So we've got a bit of a longer curve Coming from here, here is our top bar. Any lines that don't uh, form a pleasing curve, you're gonna wanna sculpt those, okay? 
I think I'm going to bring this down right here so that this is a, a little bit more natural of a curve. Right? And I'm going to have this coming back up so that this side isn't going to show, but it's going to hint that that's what's happening. Okay? So I'm, I'm pretty pleased with this. So what I'm going to do is now is uh, head for another one. And on this one, I'm going to, let me think. Let's do, let's do a front curl and do it on the other side. So let me make my J right here. And this is from the first lesson. Then I'm going to come from here like so. All right. Now our finished widths are a little bit um, different, but it does not matter. This is a very organic looking uh, creation, right? Okay. So we've got a little less room over here, so I'm going to put one of my curled ones in here and make it a little bit shorter. And this is going to be drawn behind this one in halaba fashion. So that's my, that's my uh, top bar. It's going to come in down here. And I think when I do this for real, I'm going to bring this over just a little bit. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to turn this and angle this the same as the top. Or uh, actually, I'm going to curl that. But it's still going to be in that direction. Again, don't be afraid. If you don't like the way something looks for your final project, I want you to be picky with it and, and go ahead and try to get it right. Then parallel to that. So this looks every bit as long as this, right? It's just got more going on in there, right? So here, let me think. All right, so uh, I'm going to do something down here and then probably stick something else in over here. So let's see what I end up with. Or I think I'll put my normalish petal there. I might want to make that a little bit wider at the end. And then here, I think I'll put my, no, I don't want to do that. I think I'll put it coming out then. And you can see by using overlapping, right, and these curling techniques, pretty soon we can have our flower filled in, right? So there are a few more um, things that I'm going to be teaching you. Um, one of the things I sort of hinted at yesterday or the day before the last lesson, <laughs> let's go with that, was something like that. And so if we were doing this here, 
This would go across this way behind. This line would be parallel, as with this. And this is the key to these, parallel. Okay? Parallel. Even though it seems like it's a, like it's a strange angle, you want it parallel to this one. Okay? This is basically the same technique as this curl right here, okay? You can use this ribbon technique in a number of different ways, but this, the, the key to it is getting your lines parallel to the ribbon top. Oops. Well, you get what I mean, right? So if you want to do this, you can. You will see, though, the more complex the curl that you have going on, the more simple the pattern that you use in here needs to be. So, for example, when uh, Nancy asked about the using a different uh, pattern on each section, sure, you absolutely can, but then where are you going to be in these situations here, right, where you've got just a little space and you're just going to hint at the pattern, and then are you using the same one, a different one, you know, what, or are you just going to shade here? I mean, it's, there's, it's not wrong, absolutely not wrong, and there's probably a lot of creativity that could go along with that, um, just that you have to consider all of the uh, things that go along with that, so, you know. So, for now, I'm going to leave that the way it is. I, if I were going to draw that again, I would. I, I think I would change this up a little bit, and um, I may still. We'll see. But um, I just wanted to give you an example of, once you learn a few of these techniques, you can translate them into a lot of different things. So, um, over here, let's do... Now I'm making this more complex than I'm going to, to have us doing with our finished product. Much more complex because I want you guys to see some of the possibilities that can be done with these. Okay, it's the same concepts. It You just have to practice, all right? And I know some of you are struggling with the ribboning stuff and I just want to encourage you to just keep working at it, keep practicing it. This takes time. It took me, I don't even know how many months I drew these over and over because my end goal when I started this was making a ribboned um, alphabet, which was, <laughs> which was problematic, okay? So this is what we're going to be doing. This is how we're going to be working this. And I fully expect for you guys to have, take a sheet of paper or a sketch pad page, draw this in, right? Draw this form in and, and tweak it. Play with the pedals, see what works for you, see what configurations you like, see what you're good at, see what doesn't work. Then, Practice putting your tangles in on these. Does it work there? This works this way, but I have trouble with it this way. Um, you know, now putting tangles on these is even harder, right? Because you've got to keep your head in the game on these. So um, that's what we're going to do today for the rest of the time is I am going to work on doing some of these ribbons that I've drawn in here with today's lesson on them, okay? So let me draw in a couple of these. I wanna move this over so I've got a little bit more room on this one. So 
see if I can do this in ink. <laughs> it might end up interesting, guys. I don't promise. Okay. Oh, I just did this forwards instead of backwards, didn't I? Well, that was going to be the next lesson anyway. Parallel, right? And then come up from the bottom. Like so. Right, now the next important thing is our inner aura. Remember the key to that is following your outer line. And here, you're gonna do the exact same thing we did up here. Okay. And just let it disappear. Now let me think about this. Perfect. Just follow your outer curve. Let it disappear. All right. We're just going to hint at that. So now, any of our ribbon patterns are going to work on here. Um, I had, in, in, had intended and am going to demonstrate something here for you. And I'm going to change my pen out because I don't think uh, I'm going to be able to do it uh, with my PN. Let's see. Sepia, we're not using that. That just gets me into trouble. Make sure this works. Yep. All right. So I had intended to do a tangle named Entwine with you guys today. And it goes like this. A lot of you may know this. Starts with these little rice shapes. I probably should leave a little bit more. And this is why I chose not to. So entwine, a lot of you probably know it. It's a really cool uh, sort of interwoven looking pattern. It's by Elena Hadzishaneva. Look at me go with that. And um, it's very cool. It's been one of my favorite ones for a long time. In fact, I think we did this in the 100 Day Project last year because it is a favorite of mine. Okay, the problem is not the parts that we, we can get. Okay, the problem is this business here. Okay, so we could probably figure this out fairly well here. One of the issues for this is that it's confusing. 
okay? It's confusing. If you don't go in the straight line and keep it all together, it's confusing. Okay, so now going up here, it should be fairly simple, I think. But my point here is that the more complex the pattern, the harder it is going to be to make it work in here. And if, if your spaces are tiny, it's even more difficult. And that is why something like Shattuck is a much better choice than something very cool but more difficult like this. Then you also, if you are a beginning tangler, um, struggle with um, sculpting these with the lines. And that's another more advanced technique. And, you know, some people are going to get that easily and some people won't. So, it, you know, it presents some issues. The first step in this, of course, is uh, connecting the sides, one side to the other. That part is not my issue. It's the side business that's hard and you need to start at the top. But you can see already why this is wholly inappropriate for beginners. <laughs> Not because beginners are not smart, guys, because this, this is complex. And there's a lot of thinking that goes on here. So, turn this up. So that's probably so cool, yes, dynamic, yes, but complex. So I'm not saying you can't do patterns like this. You can. Can be done. However, keep in mind that this is labor intense and on a bigger project it's really labor intense. And so you want to choose the tangles that you're going to use in here very carefully. And this is why I chose not to introduce this tangle with this technique today and decided to go ahead and introduce the way I was going to set up these uh, tile, this um, larger project. Now, um, another note is if you have a pattern that is this busy, sort of lots of lines, lots of going stuff going on, uh, it makes your shading also more problematic because in this instance you've got to shade in the normal place where we always shade right here where they overlap however you've also got overlapping right here so you're going to want to shade that but this also overlaps right so a, a bit problematic. So all of these things have to be taken into account when you're deciding on which tangles you're going to want to use here. And we are not done learning tangles and curling techniques, although these are the, the large basic techniques that we're going to be using. Uh, I will probably show you one or two more things in this area, and then we are going to be starting on our final project. And what we will do there is um, we're going to 
choose a tangle to use each time. Put it in our ribbon uh, tangle, uh, in our ribbon petal, and uh, then and each time we'll add a petal and a tangle. Okay. Now in the finished product, you can choose to use the same tangle on all your leaves. That will be very cool and dynamic, or you can use different ones as I did in the example on each petal, and that is also very cool. So uh, depending on how you get it set up, how it looks when you're done, you know, we're gonna have very cool examples of this, right? So this is what we've got today. I'm going to make this video a little bit shorter. Uh, if you would like to learn Entwine uh, and use the step out for it, um, I'm going to step it out for you right now after we've done all this business, okay? Entwine is a ribbon tangle, the same as the ones that we have done. We are gonna to wanna to set it up exactly the same with our ribbon lines and the inner auras. Okay. Now, we're gonna put rice shapes in on each side and they're going to be parallel. This is always an issue with me, but we're gonna give it a shot today and see what happens. I think I'm gonna put a little partial one here. I think I'll come back in with my P in and, and ink those in. Now, I made my first mistake here, and this should be further down. It will work, because we're gonna connect it, but further down would be better. So when I make my next set, I'm gonna bring these down a little bit further. Did I call that a mistake? I didn't mean a mistake. I meant a, a, a creative interpretation of the step out. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the next step is going to be connect each of these rice shapes on, on each side. Okay. We're going to do that alternately from bottom to top and side to side. Put a nice curve in there. And you can see why it's important to leave yourself some room here. It can be done closer together. It's just a little bit awkward, I think. All right. Now, order the order which you do this next part is important. You want to start at the top, okay? And you're going to take the tip of this outer side, and you're going to make a curved line up to the edge right there. Here, you're gonna take this, take off, curve it, touch the side, and land up here. Once again, take off, curve, touch the side, land. All right, and this will be the same except we can't see to take off. We're just gonna do that, right? Now, turn your tile upside down. Start at the top. If you don't, you'll run into a problem there. Touch the side, then touch the side and land. Take off from the tip, touch the side and land tip and land all right and where it's going off you just like that and right here okay now i'm going to switch to my pn isn't this a cool pattern i love the way it looks it's very dynamic especially once it's inked so let's do that next
Now, in Elena's Step Out, she has several variations for this that bear interest, um, bear some exploration. She has one that is connected, has connected the center strokes with a cadence stroke. And so I find some of those very interesting and I have not tried them yet. So you might want to check out her Step Out. It's on her Flickr account, but you can find the link on uh, Tangle Patterns under this pattern name, Entwine. All right, and I have done things sort of <laughs> backwards today, and uh, I do apologize for it, but I didn't want, I wanted to, one, I love this pattern, and I really wanted to use it, but I also recognized that it wasn't the best fit for for what we were doing, simply because uh, we've got both experienced tanglers and beginners in here, and I don't want anyone so overwhelmed that they don't enjoy this project. Annette... Uh, Dirksen, my little Canadian darling, uh, please settle down, take your time. If you don't get the curled ribbons, that doesn't mean this project can't be cool for you, okay? So I don't want you to get too frustrated. All right. I love you guys all so much, especially my beginners, and I don't want any of you guys feeling uh, left out or frustrated by any of these, okay? So um, fun-wise with this pattern, you can do several things. My favorite thing with interwoven patterns is to do this inner aura thing. It accentuates the weaving and the coming in and out, I think. If you're, if you're careful the way you set it up, these move smoothly from element to element. If not, then they can be a little awkward, but it's not the end of the world. Now, if ribbon patterns aren't your thing and you are a grid pattern person, this is also perfect for grid patterns um, because uh, square grids in particular work really well in these. Uh, let's see. Square grids work perfectly in ribbon patterns. And so patterns like Bales and Fife and um, some of those others are perfect in here. So, you know... I want you to be practicing your favorite tangles on here. If there's a tangle you want to use, try it out. See how you do. I'm trying to decide if I want to aura any further over here. And I don't know. I like the aura on the outer edges. Really, you can do whatever you want. So um, this is in twine. And it is by Elena, and I don't think I'm going to be able to fit it in. Her last name is awesome, Hadzi. Geneva. Oh, this is supposed to be a Z. Sorry, sorry, Elena. Geneva. All right, sorry, Elena. I'll get it better next time. All right, Entwine by Elena. Hadzi Geneva. Beautiful pattern, isn't it? Okay. All right, guys. I want you to make a tile like this. Um, do the background treatment. Try to make it the same material that you're going to do your final project on. Okay. Draw in as many of these elements as you can and practice the tangles you like on them. All right. There were many that we did in the 100 day project. Uh, one of my favorite uh, ones for this is Flux, of course, just the way I did it over and over in our 100-day project. Um, Zante would work on this. That was a popular one. Uh, Lolo would work. What was the, the alternating heart uh, tangle? Uh, so look at your tiles from the 100-day project and see if you've got something in there that you really enjoyed that might work in here, as long as you have got your inner auras that separate, 
these are essential if you are doing this type of thing, right? It's essential because it's what it's what keeps these sections divided. You see, whoops, sorry. It's creative writing. They keep all of this separated from each other. And so it's essential that you get this in as neatly as possible so that all of your elements have that, that separation between them. Okay? All right, guys. Yes, uh, we didn't finish anything up. However, there was a lot of important information about our project in here. And um, be expecting to learn more tangles and uh, a couple more uh, folding and ribboning techniques. And then uh, be ready to put all of this on our large page and get started. All right, guys. This is it for today, and I'll see you next time.